Welcome to the UC Davis PACES Just in Time videos. I'm Dr. Julia Magania, and I'm a part of PACES. Let's quickly review the PCARN intra-abdominal injury rule. You may remember the PCARN TBI rule. Well, they've done one for blunt abdominal injury as well. In this case, they tackled which injured child does not need an abdominal CT. PCARN enrolled over 12,000 children across 20 emergency departments in the U.S. They used variables that we can all use and identify on a history or physical exam to determine which injured children were at low risk for clinically important intra-abdominal injury. They defined this as an injury that requires acute intervention, such as a therapeutic laparotomy, embolization, blood transfusion for abdominal hemorrhage, or IV fluids for more than two nights for abdominal injuries. This rule has a 99.9% negative predictive value. So who can we use this gonad saving tool on? Well, children less than 18 years of age with blunt torso trauma, that includes your thorax and abdomen, within 24 hours of injury. It was not studied in penetrating trauma, children with pre-existing neurological disorders that would make it hard to reliably examine them, or pregnant patients. PCARN gave us seven predictors of intra-abdominal injury, and if you have zero of those predictors, you do not need a CT scan. If you have one of them, now you need to think it through a little more or consider observation. Let's talk through the predictors of clinically important intra-abdominal injury in descending order of scariness. First off is evidence of abdominal wall trauma or a seatbelt sign. Yeah, this one makes a lot of sense to me. I have a healthy respect for a seatbelt sign because the abdomen is so soft, it takes a lot of force to crush those vessels on the abdominal wall and actually leave a bruise. This sign is the most dangerous since 6% of patients with abdominal wall trauma had clinically important intra-abdominal injury. I don't know about you, but that is highly convincing for me. These are patients I personally either just scan or watch and get labs with a low threshold to scan. The second variable is a GCS score less than 14. This was also an important predictor since 5% of children with a GCS of 3 to 13 had clinically important intra-abdominal injury. I can't say this surprises me, and I personally tend to scan these kiddos as well since I can't get a reliable exam on them if they have any blunt torso trauma. Number three is absent or decreased breath sounds. So pull out that stethoscope, quiet the trauma bay, because 3% of abnormal breath sounds were associated with clinically important intra-abdominal injury. Number four is abdominal tenderness. Any abdominal tenderness. Only 1.4% of kids with tenderness had clinically important injury. I believe this is because kids can be really squirrely with the belly exam, and I tend to watch these plus or minus labs if there's tenderness alone. The fifth variable is thoracic wall trauma. This is harder to remember because I tend to focus on the belly, but it's important to take off all of the clothes and do a full exam because about 1% of kiddos with evidence of thoracic trauma have clinically important intra-abdominal injury. And number six is complaint of abdominal pain. This predictor is of lower concern with less than 1% of children reporting abdominal pain actually had clinically important intra-abdominal injuries. This might be because kids can have pain for so many reasons and have a hard time verbalizing the pain that they do have. Number seven is vomiting. Okay, I would have guessed this would be higher up. Only 0.5% of kids with vomiting had clinically important intra-abdominal injury. I personally observe these kiddos get labs and do serial exams, but you certainly don't have to rush to CT scan, especially with vomiting alone. Okay, how not to use this tool. The authors point out that if everyone who had one or more of the prediction variables were scanned, 58% of the patients would have been scanned instead of the 46% who were scanned, or the 27% who actually had clinically important injuries and it would not have saved any lives. That would defeat the purpose of this rule to say who does not need an abdominal CT scan. Also, this tool should not be used when you are concerned about abuse. In that case, 
you're worried about even small intra-abdominal injuries that can indicate more trauma than is obvious. And we all know we cannot get an accurate history or timing from caregivers who hurt children. I think it's helpful to note that five of the six who were missed by the rule ended up having clinically important injury actually had hematuria or elevated liver function tests. So I personally add labs to my evaluation when I'm concerned about intra-abdominal injury. Okay, that's it. If you do not have signs of abdominal or thoracic wall trauma, abdominal pain or tenderness to palpation, GCS less than 14, decreased or absent breath sounds, or vomiting, you do not have to get an abdominal CT scan on a kiddo with blunt torso trauma. But if you have a variable or two, don't automatically jump to a CT scan. Instead, consider labs, serial exams, perhaps an ultrasound, or transfer to a pediatric trauma center.